As many of you out there may already be aware, I recently put one of these here fast safety systems, or SFS 2.0, whatever you want to call them, on my Titmouse, my Browning High Power clone. At the time, I told you, I've never really seen a point in these. I always thought they were just a little bit silly. I thought they were kind of cool, but they didn't really serve any practical purpose. But I said I would try it, and then I would give you a review and let you know if I was as right as I almost always am, or if I was wrong about it. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at it, see what it is, and then I'll tell you what I think of it. Now the system itself is pretty straightforward. As you see here, this gun has the hammer down. Now this is a single action firearm designed to be carried cocked and locked in condition one. Well, this gun actually is in condition one, it just has the hammer forward. So it's not technically condition one, but it still is because all you have to do to be able to fire it, much like you would if it was cocked and locked is, remove the safety. Once you remove the safety, the hammer springs back into the ready position and the gun can be fired. And to return it to a safe position, you don't actually push the safety up, you push the hammer back in. So, you know, I always thought that was kind of cool, but I didn't think it really served any purpose and it definitely wasn't necessary and wasn't advantageous in any way, really. But I will have to say there are actually some advantages to this system. So let's go over the advantages first before I tell you what I think of the system overall. Now, a lot of the advantages come from the hammer here itself. One of which is because this hammer is smaller and it's not carried in the back position, in the rear cocked position, like this right here, it's not carried like that. Because it's not back, it doesn't snag on things like a cocked and locked pistol can do. If you've ever carried cocked and locked, you know it can snag your shirt, can snag other things. Uh, this being forward, takes care of that problem. And another problem this being forward takes care of that you really have when this is back like this, especially if you're, uh, I don't know, a more full figured person like myself, this pokes the crap out of your love handles when the hammer is back like this. The hammer being forward, it stops that. I don't end up with that little bloody spot on my side from where my hammer's been digging into me all day with carrying this one with this forward like this. So I will have to say that is a big advantage in itself. Another big advantage is, even when the hammer is back, since it is a much smaller profile hammer, doesn't have a big ring or anything on it, doesn't bite me as bad. I don't know if you can see the little permanent scar I have on my hand right there from where guns bite me. This gun was one of the worst ones for biting me. Uh, this gun bit pretty much every time I took it to the range to fire it because I have kind of meaty hands. So this here doesn't bite at all, and believe me, that's awesome. It's nice to not have to bleed just to shoot one of your favorite guns. One other advantage of this system that you may not notice if you don't open carry, but I occasionally open carry, especially up here where I live now, is when the hammer is forward, people don't look at your gun and go, uh, did you know your hammer's back on your gun? If you're someone who carries a 1911, something like that, I'm sure if you open carry, you've had a time where someone says, uh, your gun's cocked, did you know that? And uh, we had to say, yes, we do know that. It's meant to be carried that way. It's carried that way because the safety is on, it's single action, and it's meant to be carried cocked and locked, so it is supposed to be like that. Okay, now let's talk about the advantages of the system. Does it actually give you any advantage uh, as far as carrying the gun and using the gun other than those little advantages I mentioned simply because of the shape of the hammer and where the hammer is carried? And I'm glad to say it does. It's actually very comforting to have that hammer forward. It makes the gun feel a lot safer. And I know a lot of people talk about feeling safer doesn't mean anything. Well, it does when you have to carry your gun every day. And if something like that can make me feel comfortable, and I'm comfortable with the gun already, I'm comfortable with cocked and locked. If this being forward can make me feel a little bit more uh, emotionally secure with my gun, then imagine what it could do for people who wouldn't carry cocked and locked. So I think that's a huge advantage of this right here. The fact that some people would, who wouldn't carry cocked and locked would carry in this position just because it is safer. Uh, one other aspect of that being safer is this little hammer here actually works as a big safety flag. Anytime you look down at your hole, if the hammer's forward, you know this gun can't fire, even if it is ready to go if you need it. And if you look down and it's back, well, then you know your safety's come off. And I've had my safety come off on a gun before. It's not that uncommon, but it's nice to be able to look down and see and just push it back down. You don't even have to take the gun out of the ha uh, holster. You can just push the hammer back down and it's safe once again. And there's also the other advantage, like I said before, that it doesn't bite me now. That's not just a comfort advantage, it's a tactical advantage. You don't want your gun to be hurting you when you have to use it. So the fact that it doesn't hurt me now is a good thing tactically also. 
Now let's talk about one big disadvantage a lot of people talk about, and that's that you have to retrain yourself to use this hammer system properly. And I just don't find any merit in that because it's the same as if you just carried it cocked and locked. You draw the weapon, you release the safety, and you pull the trigger. Nothing changes in your actual getting your gun from your holster to having it ready to go. The only thing that changes is when you load the gun initi uh, initially is that you have to push the hammer forward instead of pushing the safety up. That's the only change. And I would say it did take me a little time to get used to doing that, but it's nothing that really requires a lot of training. And it's something you do when you have time to do it because you're not in any rush when you're actually initially loading your gun so you have time to go oh yeah i just pushed this forward and i'm fine so as far as needing retraining to use this system i just don't find those claims to be credible at all so i guess in the end i'm going to have to say i wasn't as right as i usually am because this hammer is awesome i actually love this gun even more with this system on it in fact i like this so much that if i get any 1911s or if i start carrying a 1911 for any reason i would definitely put one of these type hammers on it i would love to have the same system on my 1911 so i'm going to say i was wrong it's not just cool it's actually just plain awesome this is a great trigger system i like it it's a little more difficult to install than a regular trigger system there's a couple more pieces you have to put in when you're actually installing it pieces that hang from the actual uh sear pin so it's not as easy to install as a regular trigger that's the one drawback to it but once it's in there, man, is it worth it. I love being able to carry it like this. I love having the hammer down, less chance of a negligent discharge, less chance of it firing if you drop it. It's just safer all the way around. So I'm going to have to say, like I said, I was completely wrong about this system. And if I ever have any gun that needs to be carried cocked and locked, I'm going to hope one of these systems is available for it because I will definitely put it on there because this is awesome.